Now we will want to crop the resulting video. For this we simply go to View and go to Crop. Or As you can see you can press F4 and here we have the crop dialog box. Now because I have auto crop enabled it did automatically crop the video. I'm going to go ahead and pull the slider to the right hand side. And as you can see we can actually preview the video. The main thing we want to do on cropping is to try to get as little of the black bars as possible while still keeping all of the image with inside the actual viewing screen. Now whenever I move the right hand and left hand side you can see that there's very little black bars on the side even though auto crop said that there was some there's actually very little. Now on the top and on the bottom you can see there's actually a lot of black bars. So whenever we re-enable auto crop by pressing A it will actually crop off the bars on the bottom and the top but watch what it does on the sides. As you can see it actually cut off picture information. Since we don't want this to happen let's go ahead and pull the left and pull the right. To do this we simply click anywhere upon the screen and hold and drag it to the right. Now on the top and the bottom you can see that we did lose some picture information as well. Now what we want to do is we want to keep as much of the picture information as possible but we have one caveat. We want to keep this ratio the same of 16 slash 16. If you go less, if we actually reduce this black bar and reduce this black bar, you can see now that we don't have any black bars anymore but our ratio is off now. Having a ratio that's off will end up causing issues on certain portable devices when trying to view this video. So let's go ahead and expand it back out to where we have a normal ratio. We are now done with cropping so let's close the dialog box. One thing I mentioned earlier was interlace and video bitrate. Some of you may not know what interlacing actually looks like. I'm going to use this example from just Say Yes over at uh, WordPress and as you can see this video is actually interlaced and you can see this by these jagged corners on the video. The pizza has the jagged corner, this man in the background has jagged corners. This is an interlaced video. De-interlacing actually takes this line and blurs it and makes it consistent throughout the picture the way it's actually supposed to be. Due to this blurring that is why you end up having issues with pixelation and why we need to increase the video bitrate. There are various filters that you can actually use to get rid of the interlacing. The one that I find the best is field deinterlace. You can use whatever you want. This is just the one that I prefer. Now since our video is not interlaced, I am actually going to turn this filter off. Now we are ready to go ahead and add this to our processing job queue. So we go ahead and click Next. Once again we are prompted with a dialog box that gives us information. Feel free to read it. And here we can actually see the jobs within our jobs directory. Now if you're going to encode, encode multiple videos you can actually hit close in this section, come back over here, open up a new source, select whichever type you want and you can add those files into it. So if we were going to do these again you'd click open and as you could see it would add it in and you would go through the exact same process all over again and ultimately it would lead you back to your job queue you would have multiple jobs in here. Once you're ready to start the jobs you simply click start and it will start the process of encoding. Do make sure that you stick around for the first encode because you will actually be prompted to agree to a GNU uh, general public use license. So go ahead and click OK on this and then you're going to be given some information about a virtual dub mod. Go ahead and click start you're going to be prompted with some information here. Just click OK. And now Virtual Dub will start in the background doing its work.
While the video is still being encoded, we can go ahead and go and grab our subtitle files if we choose to use them. For this, we simply go to the temporary folder that was created underneath our root directory, and we can use either the IDX and subfile, or we can use the SRT files. Be very cautious when using the SRT files, though, because they have uh, had an algorithm applied to the .sub file, which is actually true images, and it does the best that it can to render that into raw text. The problem is, it's not always accurate, and therefore your subs can actually have problems with them. For mine, I use .sub and .idx files, even though they are a little bit larger, because they are pure and accurate. Once our encodes are done, we'll be brought back to the main stack rip interface. And from here, we will want to go into our directory structure and uh, go back to the root. And here we will actually have our video file itself. And this is the file that you'll want to take off and uh, move from wherever uh, you need it and uh, um, or, or copy it to wherever you need it and you will have it to work with. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation of how to use the new version dot three of Stack Rips. If you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and post them down in the comment section of this YouTube video. And as always, appreciate you listening in.